Good afternoon. Welcome along this afternoon to the Business for Life webinar. I'm really excited to have along with me this afternoon, Colin Phillips. Hey, Col, how are you going? Uh, so Colin this afternoon is going to be having uh, talking us through the business fundamentals. I've worked with Col now for, uh, worked and associated with Col through networking and other, and other things um, probably over the last few years. Uh, and Colin has had a number of successful businesses um, and uh, built them up and then sold them on and um, done a fantastic job with those. And it's got lots of tools and tricks and, uh, and strategy to share with you this afternoon. So we're really excited to have Colin Phillips here with us. So uh, Colin, how are you this afternoon? Uh, I'm, I'm very well, Matt. Um, it's uh, not the afternoon where I am because I am on the other side of the world, which is uh, the really good thing about uh, all this technology. So I'm based in Ireland at the moment and it's 5 a.m. It's not as hot as Australia or, yeah, wherever you're listening. It's a little bit cooler here. I bet it's cooler. We've, we've been up at 40-plus uh, degrees uh, over the past few weeks. So um, how, what's the temperature like over there? Oh, it's, an, it's a nice, cool five degrees at the moment. So it's, uh, it's good. Uh, you can have that. You can have that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can have your 40 degrees. I, got, I, couldn't, I couldn't last in that heat, so it's good. And you don't miss the 40 degrees either, I'm sure. Uh, no, you just get, I think you get used to it. You adapt to where you are, I think, uh, which, is, uh, which is a good thing about humans. We're, we're adaptable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and, um, and you lived in Australia for a number of years. How long was that for? Yeah, I lived in Australia for six years. Six years. I'm actually an Australian citizen as well, which is great. Uh, and then I, I lived in New Zealand for a year as well. Oh, um, did you? Yeah, Just for a so, year. I can see why you'd only spend a year there. <laughs> That's no offense to any Kiwis on board. Uh, no, <laughs> definitely. It was uh, it was a good year before I went to Australia. Uh, and then, yeah, we stayed in Australia for six years, which was uh which was good, uh, and I was in the UK for six years, maybe before that. And now, at the end of last year, I've just returned back to Ireland. So yeah, it's good. Fantastic. And and you've had a number of successful businesses, and you've sold uh, sold one recently. When I last um, was uh, worked doing a lot of stuff with you over here in Australia, um, and this afternoon you're going to talk about a lot of the stuff that you've learned um, through running your own businesses, and also just from. Um, life experience, I guess, as well, and from being around the experts. Yeah, it's, that's the thing about um, being able to travel. You get to uh, work with a lot of different experts and um, different businesses and see different viewpoints on on, on, on business. Uh, so when uh, we left Australia, I had, uh, when I was in Australia, I bought my own um, physiotherapy clinic, and then we expanded it uh, over a two-year two to three year period and then I was in a position to sell it and after three years uh, and once I sold it I could um, then look towards moving home but uh, before I sold it you had to get all the systems right in place so that was probably a key thing for us in the fact that if you have good systems your business is probably more sellable and then working in the different countries and different clinics so I'd worked in probably 10 to 12 different clinics or different businesses and you get to see what's what works well, uh, what, uh, what teams work well together, what managers work well, and you're able to pick up the best bits from that and apply them to your own um, business. So yeah. having good uh, mentors along the way has really taught me uh, taught me a lot, to be honest. So, yeah, it was good. Absolutely. So you talk about good systems making the business more sellable. I guess it makes it easier to sell but also would add dollars to the the ticket price would it make it a higher value business as well oh yeah ab absolutely I, I think that one of the key things um having good systems in place is or a good um test of having a business in uh, system is can you go away on holidays and your business still runs if you're not on on site so i would have traveled a lot uh, back and forth to the UK and Ireland when I was in Australia and I was gone for three or four weeks at a time uh, and uh, that was a testament to how well the business systems were organized because I didn't get a phone call while I was away so and and even if I did there wasn't much I could do about about the problem on the other side of the world yeah. so 
training your staff and having good systems in place meant that I was able to have more freedom in my own life as well as adding value dollars to the business. So Absolutely. Uh, the, the value, the value uh, dollars to the business is one thing, but I think having the freedom to go, oh, I don't need to be on site 24 seven because a lot of small businesses, I think, get really wound up in their business sometimes and they find it hard to get that work-life balance and having good systems in place is a great way to, to get that balance. Absolutely. We had a business for life boot camp last week and we spent a lot of time on systems. We were talking about obviously you need to have the systems and the processes specifically so people know what they're doing, when to do it and, and how to do it. But uh, it's about the people as well. And you just said that you've got to still have good people to deliver on the on the processes that you create and the, using the platforms you create as well. And that allows you to take the time off, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I think like you have all these brilliant systems, like you can use Asana, you can use videos to uh, record how, how things are done online. But at the end of the day, it's like if you have a, a really fancy car, the car is only going to be driven uh, as well as the guy who can drive it as such. Do you know what I mean? So if you get a novice driver in a Ferrari, he's going to drive it, it's going to be rubbish. Whereas yeah. if you get someone who knows how to drive in a Ferrari, it's going to drive well. Do you know what I mean? So It's great analogy. Pe- yeah, pe- people are people are um, the uh, the core of your business generally, both customers and your staff. So investing in the people, I would say, is is a big thing. Excellent. Now you've got t- take us through your journey so far and a bit of your story because you've uh, had a pretty fascinating uh, story and and journey behind you, haven't you? Yeah. So like I, I've been looking at the fact that I've. I've 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 always enjoyed what I do, um, and I was always fascinated by by systems and, and business. So I'm uh, a physiotherapist by profession or trade, shall we say? Uh, I trained in uh, in Ireland and then moved across to the UK, and then I lived in in the UK maybe for uh, three uh, six years altogether, and that's where I met my my wife. And uh, Nicola, who's in bed, uh, and um, then we went to uh, Zambia, and I'd done some volunteer work in Zambia uh, as a physio, and that was a really good uh, way to see how people can adapt with not much, uh, with not many resources, and they're still able to get things done. Uh, so, following my stint in Zambia, I went across to New Zealand because it was always easier for um physios to get into new zealand than it is to australia uh so i worked in new zealand for a year and then once i I was in new zealand we said oh let's go try sydney for a while and see how that works out and then we i was really lucky in the fact that i I got more training in sydney in australia in perth uh, just to upskill because the more you invest in yourself the more opportunities come up and following that, I got an opportunity to work in a clinic, which is just down the road from um, your head office in uh, Sydney. And from there, then had the opportunity to buy uh, the practice after a year. And then, as I said, we, we systemized it after a while uh, and we expanded it from one clinic to two clinics. And uh, while I was doing that systemization, I, I, I got a, a business coach or another mentor on board who was specific to the industry that I was in. And that really helped um, helped uh, grow the business and uh, put the processes in place required to make it more sellable. Uh, and once I sold the business, then we were we were in Australia for another six months, and I was I was missing business uh, because I enjoy the uh, aspect of helping people in business. So that's when I set up a thing called um, Practice Nav, and basically with Practice Nav, it's a it's a company that helps businesses integrate the systems that they have to make it more uh, automated. Now I know that's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, but basically, it it helps healthcare businesses um, get their get their stuff together because, <clears throat> as uh, in the healthcare industry, you've got uh, great engineers or great physios who who know how the human body works, but don't have that much business acumen, and they run themselves into the ground and they get burnt out. And I think that that's not just applicable to 
um, the healthcare industry. I think that's applicable to all, all forms of industry because they're really good technically at what they do, but they just don't have the business systems in place to to leverage what they do. Uh, and it, it, having someone on board to help them with their systems help, helps them. So that's where practice nav came in. And I've got um, clients in Australia. I've got clients in the UK and Ireland. And what we do is we do every two weeks, we, we touch base and we put another plan in place. And initially they start off with a with a business audit and I give their business a score and, we, and that's your outcome measure. And then we work on improving that. Um, so that's that's practice now. And then when I came back to Ireland, what I've done then is I set up my my own clinic called Compass Physio, and that's basically a flagship for ideally how businesses should run in the healthcare system. Um, so that's uh, just after setting uh, been set up, and it's a um, yeah that's that's where that clinic is at. And then I work on site with another one of my clients. To develop an already existing business, uh, just adapting their systems, new website, uh, new processes on board, and new staff members. So, growing the value of their business. So, yeah, it's a it's an interesting uh, story that I have at the moment, uh, and uh, hopefully, it keeps continuing. Awesome. So, I certainly had a variety of different uh, of experiences over a variety of different countries in that. Um, yeah. Your, your experience at Zambia, so that's kind of north of South Africa, Zimbabwe, kind of, is that, am I in the right zone of the yeah, world there? Yeah, it's, it's basically bank smack in the middle of, um, it's a landlocked country in, in uh, Africa, yeah. Africa, yeah, and, cool. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating place, yeah. It's, so uh, what, it's got, what made you decide, so you practice as a physio there, um, yeah. was it like volunteer or what? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so that's, <laughs> yeah. Or you're charging seventy five bucks for an appointment. <laughs> no, definitely not. No, no, there was no high caps or anything like that there. <laughs> or, uh, no, you didn't have any EPCs or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So basically, what 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 it was is, I always said if I do qualify, uh, it was a kind of just something in my head that I always wanted to kind of give back or something like that uh, to you know, the less fortunate because it's easy to go, oh, let's just uh, go make money in business. But at the end of the day, it's not about, um, it's not always about money. Um, It's about your quality of life and what you can give back. So for me, uh, doing that three months is probably one of the best things I've done because it really makes you appreciate uh, the little things in life, like a hot shower or something like that, you know. Um, And the way those people adapt to what they have is really fantastic. And when I was traveling back from Australia to move back to Ireland, um, we went uh, we went back there, which was seven years later, uh, to the to the place where I was. Uh, so I was able to see some of the changes that I put in place back seven years ago, and see the effect that that had on on on, on the different people's lives there. So it was really really good to go back and see how you can make a difference, however small. You know, all those things have a ripple effect. And so, so what, were you treating, what were you treating people for over there? Like, um, was it the typical, like in, in Australia, for example, I assume there's, you know, you'd have the sporting injuries and you'd have the back pain and lots of the stuff. Um, yeah. Real, you, you like, first world kind of problems here. What, what, what are you treating for over there? So where I was working, it was um, a, a kind of a, a kids a kids orphanage type place uh, called the Cheshire Homes, and mm. what it, what it was is that the a lot of the kids would have sometimes distressed births uh, that they wouldn't have in um, first world. So you'd have a lot of maybe cerebral palsy, hydrocephalus, that sort of stuff that would be would be not uncommon in in first world but will be definitely more prevalent in the third world because of a distressed labor and a lack of oxygen at the time of birth because a lack of midwives and that sort of stuff and then that's one aspect of it and then we went uh, and worked in the hospital a little bit as well and for that it was you know looking at the effects of some of the um 
first world diseases that have been eradicated. So you'd be looking at the effects of maybe polio. H, uh, no, I know HIV hasn't been eradicated, but the effects, you can see the effects maybe on an X-ray of HIV and that sort of stuff. It was really, really interesting to see from my point of view. Um, but yeah, definitely not first world problems. Yeah, uh, They have a kind of a get on with it more attitude. So it was good. Usually you don't have a choice, do they? So yeah, exactly. Uh, so they adapt. Yeah, 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 which is which is good. Uh, and yeah, then at the end of that, I got a like uh, I went down to Livingston, Victoria Falls for a week. Yeah, and let off some steam. So I highly <laughs> recommend it. Fantastic, excellent. Yeah. So you've also you've learned a lot, I guess, through uh, building those businesses and and those life experiences as well. Um, yeah in the area that that you're titling here today business fundamentals is that falling under the category systems then is there lots of systems in that because that seems to be where your gift is yeah so like it's interesting so if we if we look at the the foundations of business from say my point of view it's like people talk about oh what systems do you have in place um and they go oh you need to have this system in place or that system in place and it's all it's all great advice and knowledge but what i found is if if you don't have the foundations in place then there's no point in having uh uh, and another type of system in place that won't uh, be as effective so for for example if you um have a uh, you take card payment, okay? You've got a, a terminal or, or a machine to take card payment, and that's a really good system. Um, however, if you don't have a lease signed for the premises you operate from, that lease, that premises can be pulled from under your feet at any one time. Uh, so there's no point in having a, a great system to take payment if if you don't have a place to operate your business from. Um, so, uh, like for for me, what what I'm I'm looking at is um starting off if you can see that can they see that um triangle but yeah. yes we got the triangle the foundation for business triangle yeah okay. sure do so basically like it's just going back to the fundamentals i suppose it's like the systems that you have in place the first thing we we would look at um from a healthcare point of view is uh, what's your plan? What, uh, why are you doing the business? Is it just that your business is handed down to you or is it just that you want to give something a try? So it's always good to have a plan in place. Now that plan may not always go to to plan as such, uh, but it's having a plan that you can adapt or uh, adjust along the, along the way of the business. And even if you have the weirdest plan, at least you have a plan. So your plan, my, for example, my plan in Sydney was to systemize the business and have it in a sellable opportunity after three years and pay off the business loan. That was, that was my plan for the business. And we, we got that plan done, plan done within three years. So that was a really positive thing, but I, I wouldn't have been able to do that unless I had a plan. Um, and then I suppose the other thing is, what's your philosophy on... Uh, the business are in life so if you're for if you're just in business to make money uh, and just uh, be ruthless in business that's one philosophy uh, and that may work with whoever you are but for me uh, my philosophy is uh, the first thing is to help people uh, from a healthcare point of view and then the next thing is to make money after that so it's it's looking after the per people first and then the reward comes after so uh, uh yeah that's the example for that one i suppose philosophy is is what what um what is your ideal source or what is your ideal area of business that you're getting into as in uh how would you uh, is it a is it about if it's you know, Simon Sinek talks about you know finding your why. Is that would that yeah, be similar? Yeah, finding the yeah. why are you in business if you um, if it's not something you love doing, and you're passionate about, and you've got a purpose behind it, then that that's your philosophy. That's why you're in business. Absolutely. Thanks for that, save Matt. Yeah, you did recommend. <laughs> you did recommend that book. To, yeah, you did recommend that book to me, and I, I have read that book, and it's a really good book actually. So I would <clears> uh, um, uh, I highly recommend that book to anyone who's trying to get into business uh, on that one. Um, so it's, yeah, being passionate about what you do. You don't want to go into work and just be bored, stupid for the day. Uh, so unless you have some passion behind you, it's not going to, um, it's not going to grow. Your business isn't going to grow and it's not going to adapt. So, Absolutely. 
the other thing then is where you operate from. So I operate um, from two areas at the moment. Uh, I've got my my clinic in uh, Kilkenny called Compass Physio, and that Compass is like a guide to your um, your everyday health, and that's where that name comes from. So it's having a name right as well. So that's where the premises is on that. In healthcare, I can't treat people over the phone or well I can uh, give them advice but I can't physically do hands-on treatment over the phone so I have to have a decent premises in place and with that premises if I don't own it I have to have a contract in place to um to secure my future at that premises by law uh, and that's where uh, having good contracts from the get-go is really important and having a mentor or someone who's done it before can give you really easy templates or guides on in that in that uh, in relation to that matter to help things help help it get set up uh, and I suppose if you're looking then at the next one we're looking at capital uh, which initially starting off in business ideally you want a contingency fund so if you don't envisage seeing any clients in the first six months you have to see what are you going to live off of for that six months and that goes back to having a plan so your business might start off you might have be self-employed and have your own job and starting off for the first six months that might be a good way to keep your your capital uh coming in and to pay for food and accommodation um so yeah food and accommodation is probably uh most essential in life uh so somewhere to live and some something to eat uh, and then if you can sustain it with your self-employed job while building up your own business that's a really good way to start sometimes with capital uh for me the capital i got my capital uh through vendor finance and um a bank loan so that's where that's where i got my capital to start the business uh the healthcare business to buy it and the one that i've got in ireland uh i've got the funds from selling the business to, to kick off this one in ireland and practice nav i didn't need any funds to start that really uh that's just an online kind of training um application uh, and then the last one in the in the lower pyramid is drive if if you do, as it goes back to philosophy, uh, if you don't have a drive or a passion to get up out of bed in the morning and uh, go hard at your business, then you're wasting your time uh, because it's just going to uh, fall flat on its, on its butt and you're just going to be frustrated. So don't waste 18 months to two years of your life by doing a half hour's job um, when you're trying to build a business or it's not going to come off the ground and that's why i think that's why a lot of businesses fail in the first three years or even year because they haven't looked at that bottom part of the pyramid um what what would you think on that matter or... oh look definitely there's a lot of people that uh they they get into business because they think they'll make money out of it um not because it's, they've got a passion or a why behind um, doing what they're doing and you've got to love what you do and um, you know there are I opened um, over about five or six years or whatever it was uh, nine retail shops and by the time I got to the ninth one it, it didn't float my boat anymore there was no passion and energy about what I was doing it was now just a process that I was part of um, and sure they ran well and you know some of them were, were extremely successful businesses but at the end of the day if they're not going to excite you and make you want to jump out of bed in the morning, then uh, you're in the wrong game. You're doing the wrong thing. And when you're in business, you can't afford to not be passionate and have drive with uh, what you're doing in business because, uh, you know, there's too much opportunity gone to waste. But there's also, you know, you could also go down the gurgler at the same time um, or, you know, not be motivating and leading a great bunch of people that uh, to do great stuff and, and um, you're kind of wasting your life away, I think. So you can do that in a plan A job for someone else if you're not that keen. But uh, I think uh, yeah. if you're going to be in business for yourself, you might as well be excited about it because you're taking a risk to uh, do something that uh, you know the majority of people will fail at when they give it a go. So you might as well be enjoying a lot, enjoying it for the ride, eh? Yeah, so I completely agree with that. And as you say, if if it's not giving you that buzz or that passion anymore, if you've built a decent business, then you're going to get the reward. If you get someone else in to who you've trained, who you've trained, and you have good procedures in place, and they can 
they can just run it for you and then you get the reward at the top because you're after working your way up to that and you might want to hold on to that business or you can potentially sell it so it, it just goes to show if you have a good plan at the start it may not always be the plan that you end up with because you may not enjoy the business anymore but as long as you've put in the hard yards and you've got a good uh, solid structure of a business in place technically then anyone can run it and a really good book uh, for that one is the e-myth um, so I highly recommend that book uh, for business systems uh, so going on to level two on the pyramid um, is so you've, you've you've got your plan in place you've got your premises you've got your business um, uh, organized you've got your finance uh, and if you've been if you're a one man show or a one woman show for that matter, then it's uh, it's always good then to see if you can replicate what you do and get someone else in. Um, and your business may not be in a position to do that, but it's it, you can have um, not just physical staff on site, you can outsource to contractors. Uh, and that's what I've done a lot with um, practice nav. So having staff on board is one thing, but I would, I can't emphasize enough having staff that you invest in. If you don't invest in your staff, then it, it, you you might as well not have staff because having bad staff on board is it will cost your business dearly. Uh, and unless your staff have similar philosophies and similar drive and passion to you in relation to your business, then you're going to struggle um, to get your business off the ground, and people will or your clients will complain so for example in the physio uh, world if we get a new staff member on board uh, if they're clinical uh, then we would give them money towards expanding their horizons on uh, continued professional development and then we would also have a review meeting once a week for an hour going through different caseloads and stuff like that for admin in a, in a physio world or a healthcare world uh, or any world for that matter we would train them in our systems about how to use how to process payments how to greet clients and that sort of stuff so it's very important that they have a policies and procedures manual handed them when they come in and they read through it and they take it off uh, and that goes on to the next point is the policies and procedures manual if you're running a small business no matter how small if it's only you you should have a, a, a policies and procedures manual uh, online or on asana or any of these great uh, tools that you can use nowadays um, to help you uh, get the structures of your business in place that if someone comes in to replace you whether you're going on holidays or you're outsourcing a task they can just follow the manual uh, and that's a good a sign of a good uh, having a good business if you have someone who can replace you instantly as regards the tasks you do uh, so that goes on to uh, systems then with the different types of systems you can have in in business or in healthcare if you think about uh how what type of business you're looking at so for healthcare i, I know i keep going back to healthcare but i think these are uh, applicable to all sorts of business um if you if you have a business and the system you're using isn't ideal or isn't uh, up to scratch then you need to look at the different systems you're using so for example in healthcare, a lot of people still use paper notes. So as practice now, when we come in to do a business audit, the first thing we would look at is trying to get them onto digital notes. Uh, so when they're taking their clinical notes, it's stored online and they're not having to uh, write on a piece of paper. Having digital notes online means the process of reminding a patient, they'll get a text message, their invoices are on email, that can be linked to a business system like uh, QuickBooks or Myob or uh, Zero, for that matter. And then that's linked to Facebook, which is linked to your marketing. So making that simple adjustment uh, in healthcare from going from paper to online can have a massive impact on your business. Uh, what do you, what would you say in that, Matt, as regards um, systems for other businesses? There is no question that systems uh, <laughs> across every business are so fundamental. Um, you know, you've, you've mentioned in there a few times Asana, which is my favorite app of all yeah. time. Um, 
if uh, my team are all probably groaning in the background right now, but uh, <laughs> we are we're pretty crazy when it comes to Asana. Every every single thing that we do in our business that is um, either a recurring task, uh, which we can set up as a recurring task in Asana, um, is in there. But also just inbox zero, pushing everything from email. Um, like that's the system itself. The the process of running inbox zero. Pete Moriarty, um, you know you know Peter Moriarty. He um, he talks about inbox zero and making sure that every single day we clear our inbox um, down to zero emails and we push out the stuff that's going to take you know more than a couple of minutes into Asana and the stuff that we can handle straight away we can just handle in the middle. Or so, but um, you know little systems like that all the way through to using online platforms to manage operational systems through to automating your business for, um, you know, you talk about SMS for uh, your patients and communicating with your patients. There's so many different elements that you can automate in your business. And uh, for our Business for Life members, um, we've spent two days talking about automation and systems. Uh, but uh, for everyone else out there, they are just essential parts of taking your business to the next level, adding value into your business and freeing yourself up as a business owner to work and do the stuff on the business that you need to be doing to grow the business, not having your hands on the tools all the time. And uh, we hear it all the time. People say, the most common thing that people say to me when they come for coaching is, I just want to, I don't want to be working in the business as much. I want to work on the business. Uh, and, you know, it comes down to systems and automation and getting those processes right with um, the right people and platforms around you. Yeah, absolutely. So, and once you have uh, those systems in place, then you can you can focus on your ideal client. So, who who is your ideal client that you want to target with marketing? Um, and it, like, if you have the good systems in place, your marketing everything is easier uh, because a lot of the systems integrate with each other, uh, and that's part of what we do, I suppose, as pra- practice now. And if you are looking for, um business systems or ideas you can check out the blog on on practice nav as well for anyone in healthcare so we've done like there's over 50 blogs on different different systems that you can use in healthcare so that's um a really good one to to look at as well uh so on on to your ideal client then if you're looking for a a specific type of client so i go back to um healthcare if i'm looking for a 40 year old mom of three teenage boys or or 50 year old mom of three teenage boys who are quite active uh, that will be my ideal client in a healthcare system so i'm not going to set up a business in a retirement home and um, because they're not going to be there uh, so it's having that focus to look at what who you want to buy your product uh, and then setting up in a place where it's easy for them to access your product uh, so that's part of the number two. Uh, and then if we go on then to number three, uh, so you think about marketing, and this is where a lot of people uh, waste money on, on, on uh, it's quite easy to waste money on marketing, I find. And I think having uh, zero budget for marketing makes you um, uh, more adaptable to get better results. Uh, so if you have zero money you're going to be more creative about how you talk to your clients so uh, i would always look on return on investment in in marketing and there's some easy tools like there's loads of stuff to uh, check out online on that uh, as regards if you spend a hundred dollars are you going to get uh, two hundred dollars back if someone said that to me every time you spend a hundred dollars on marketing you will make two hundred dollars well that's I would spend then a thousand dollars on marketing if I knew I was going to get a thousand or two thousand dollars back every time. If if that was guaranteed, then of course you'd spend that money on marketing. Uh, however, a lot of people don't measure what they what they spend on marketing, and they just boost an ad on Facebook, or uh, they'll just go end of year because they see an advert from some printing company and print some flyers and they haven't talked about uh, what their unique selling point is or what their uh, call to action is. So they're just spending uh, copious amounts of money on things that haven't been planned. And that goes back down to the bottom of the pyramid again is the plan. So having a, a 
good marketing uh, strategy in place from the get go is really important, and and being able to measure what you put into it and measure the return on investment. And I think uh, having uh, systems that you can measure the input and output uh, is 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 great for business. And uh, the old saying goes, um, if if you can't measure it, then you can't manage it. So uh, that's really important for the marketing aspect of it. Uh, and you're identifying your unique selling point. Um, so for me in in uh, my clinic in, in Castle Comer in County Kilkenny Compass Physio, uh, I'll just show you my unique selling point. So it's uh, Compass Physio is the only chartered physiotherapy clinic operating in North Kilkenny who work with all major health company health insurance companies. We run on time, you can book online and we offer both male and female therapists. And that's quite a unique selling point in the location that we're set up in. So having a good unique selling point uh, will uh, get you focused on your niche market and that niche market comes back down to point number two, which is your ideal client. And then at the end of all that, once you've done everything, you should start to get some reward. Uh, And I'll just give you a couple of quick examples of uh, where it comes that you haven't uh, had good planning in place. So uh, if you, example, spend money on a website without a proper email system, uh, so if they click on the link to send an email and, and you don't get the email, um, Google AdWords campaign without, without actual online booking or follow-up emails, uh, going to a networking event without business cards, uh, gathering email addresses at a networking event and not following up on them. So it's having a system in place to follow up on all the, the leads that you generate. Uh, and then investing in a lease premises uh, and landlord sells it after six months. I've heard some horror stories on that. Um, paying for a brilliant system without training your staff. Uh, no insurance or income protection. And I just want to focus on that point for a moment. No insurance or income protection. So if you've gone completely solo and you're self-employed and you don't have a good income protection, uh, then you're leaving yourself at risk of um if you get injured or something like that then you won't be able to generate uh, revenue on uh if you're not on site in in at the start of a new business however if your if your business has a really good systems in place and it's five or ten years time down the line then that may not be much of an issue but talking to a good financial planner is really important for income protection um, and then no contingency fund if you if you get the wrong advice or you get hit with a, a big uh, tax bill or something like that that may um, affect you so you may be out of business if that doesn't um, uh, if you don't have that contingency fund in place and I think you've a, you've quite an interesting story on that one Matt don't you <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. It's a long story, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one. That's one for another day. But it's just it's something simple. Like I see it a lot at the moment uh, with practice now is that they their accountant that they're using uh, hasn't set it up properly, and then revenue is coming after them uh, in uh, for uh, more money, basically. So unfortunately, that's uh, one of the joys of doing business is um, uh, tax. Uh, they're always <laughs> going to get you in no matter what com- country even in Zambia they come after you for tax so uh, yeah um, what do they say two things are for sure in life death and taxes yes, yeah, absolutely absolutely so <laughs> just on uh, that one uh, that once you have that plan in place it just goes back to that sales funnel and that's what we that's what we would talk about with our, our clients um, having a plan strategy implementing it uh, yeah, having it in, integrating your systems and making them automated, then measuring it, then coordinating it, and then analyzing your results and maybe tweaking it a little bit, and then repeat the process over and over again. And it's 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 about doing the. I done a blog recently uh, called "Be Boring, Be Successful." If you do the boring, monotonous stuff over and over again. That's generally what uh, a lot of people don't want to do, and that's what makes businesses successful. Uh, so, Absolutely. yeah, uh, yeah, so it's I always think, fun at first. Terry Hawkins yeah. talks about. Um, yes. yeah, Terry, he yeah, says yeah. Um, uh, there's the honeymoon period where it's fun doing it, it's enjoyable doing it, and um, and we, you know, we embrace the systems and everybody does it and they they like doing it, um, and then uh, 
there's the the in between period. I can't remember what the in between period's called, but uh, where it gets boring um, and uh, monotonous, and um, and then there's mastery when we it's just innate, it's in us, and then it, it happens so automatically. Um, but there's the that period in the middle where you've got the potential to give up on it because it's yeah. boring, it's mundane, and it's it's not automatic yet. Uh, you push through that, and when you can get to the mastery, uh, it's you know that's where the sweet spot is, isn't it? Yeah, that's and that's where you get that reward at the top of the pyramid, basically. And Absolutely, it's just having it's just doing the monotonous things over and over again. And simple things like, you know, it's uh, even like a simple thing like customer service. Customer service is a massive thing for me. And one thing, if you don't take anything away from this webinar, the thing I would suggest you take away is. If you do what you say you're going to do in business, then um, then your business will flourish. Because I would say 80% of people that I deal with in business, they will say, oh, I'll email you that thing. And then you're chasing them up for an email. Or they'll say, yeah, I'll give you a ring on that. or And they never ring you. Or I'll get back to you with a quote on that. You know, if you simply have that as one of your mantras is, okay, I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. It, it means a lot and it's customer service and people appreciate it. Absolutely. And I'm going to write that down too. So um, I know that uh, if you set yourself a goal, it's always good to write down that goal. Um, yeah. But it's so true, isn't it? How often do we um, do we hear from a supplier or somebody that we're trying to yeah. get money to and they say, and you're like, yeah, no worries, just, just um, they'll say, I'll, I'll put that in an email. That's, they hear that all the time. Um, yeah. And uh, they never actually... You, you wait and wait and you got to follow it up. And then, and then when you do get an email off someone who does it, you're thinking, oh, I might do business with that person again. And it's and it's that little, little small thing that makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, awesome. Um, my favorite takeaway though from today was that if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm I'm gonna post that with your name next to it this afternoon. <laughs> well, that that's what we're we're looking at all the time is like okay, how much did did that let's say marketing budget cost and what was your return on investment? So for me, it's the when a client comes through the door, uh, I'm asking them the first. Well, one of the things I definitely ask them and I'm really hard on it is where did you hear about our business? Mm. And if they say, oh, it was signage out the front, I'm going, great, that signage out the front cost me 300 euro or $300, brilliant. Or it was on an ad on Facebook. Okay, well, then I'm going to run more ads on Facebook. So it's asking the, your clients, how did they hear about you? And then rewarding the people who may have uh, given them that referral. So is that and something that you'd write down or you record in oh, your series? Yeah. yeah, so in our... In our, in our um, we use a, a program called Clinico, and with that program, we can. Uh, it's specific to healthcare, but we can, we can um, do a report every month, and it shows where each person has come from. And then, it, if say we've got Facebook, we've got uh, other clients, uh, uh, we've got a website, Google Ads, signage, and that they can be broken down then into clients, and then you can see exactly. Who, what clients have referred other new clients to you and then what we do with that is we give them a uh, 50% off a massage mm, uh, that's so great. you know so it's just it's creating that culture of if you refer someone then you're going to get a reward it's not all the time but it's like if you uh, if someone is referring you know 10 people a month then you're going to look after that person yeah but it's, it, but it's been able to they're going to get a lot of free massages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's being able to measure who's who's sending the people to you, and that's where having it goes back to having a good system in place. If you can measure yeah. it, you can manage it. And and measure it. I guess that's one thing to know. Someone says yes, such and such referred me, or I saw your sign. The next step is obviously having somewhere to record that. But yes. then the, the third element is. Do I look at that information again? So, so am I reporting back to myself? How often am I doing it? And am I making decisions around the information that I'm getting? Yeah, and that goes back to the kind of return on investment. So if if you see that after a month you've got you've got uh, so 
if we get a, a, a one new client a day in a new business, a new healthcare business, uh, we're we're happy with that. Those figures are good. So say one new physio client, and we have thirty patients at the end of the month who are new, and if we know that we've got ten from Facebook, ten from existing clients, and ten from signage, then we're going to split our marketing budget three ways, and we're going to focus on. Uh, we might split it four ways actually. We might do thirty percent on Facebook advertising, uh, thirty percent rewarding the clients uh, and 30 percent on new signage and then we might put 10 percent and try some google adwords mm. do you know what i mean so and it's yeah, another it's you. yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely and then the following month it could be oh well 40 percent of your clients came from a google ad campaign so then you would adjust uh, maybe what you're spending on signage and put it towards a google ads campaign and that's absolutely. that's that's using that information yeah yeah otherwise you just making blind decisions and yeah. Uh, yeah and hoping for the best yeah exactly which i don't think is a good strategy i'm pretty sure that's not a good strategy <laughs> in business <laughs> but i do believe that's not. how most businesses operate as you said you know we we don't have the we you start a business without any business acumen just with a passion to do something and and what we need to do is start to learn the strategies on how to run a successful business, right? Yeah, and you can you can read all the books you want uh, on business, but reading a book is one thing, but applying the knowledge in the book is the other thing. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So applied knowledge is key. Absolutely. Yeah, implementation. You got you got to implement. Yeah. yeah. Implement or die, I say. <laughs> okay, that's a bit drastic. That's a bit drastic, but I would just say implement or starve, <laughs> uh, which leads to death. Correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. What a what a fantastic place to end a webinar. <laughs> um, De but, uh, death and taxes. Yes. Uh, I, uh, there's no questions coming up. I'm not sure if anyone's got any questions here while we're wrapping up. But uh, um, it's been an awesome. Uh, last hour with you there colin and good to catch up as well it's uh it's yeah. been a few a, a bit too long between drinks i think mate so you have to come back to australia uh or i'll have to fly over to ireland yeah. and uh, catch an up with you over conference. There. Yeah. yes we should we'll meet halfway how's that yes yeah, brilliant dubai is a nice place um, and it is so, hot too <laughs> yeah good air conditioning good air conditioning we'll head there in, we'll head there in my, my winter and okay. um, all right, no problem. No which problem. is your summer, and the temperature will be the same in both countries anyway, so that's all good. Well, hopefully. And um, just on that, Matt, if anyone has any questions, they can uh, give me an email on uh, colin at uh, practicenav.com. So that's P R A C T I C E N A V.com. Excellent. And we'll put that uh, with the with the details on the website when we post the. Uh, webinar should be up within about half an hour. So anybody jumping on uh, late to watch it or to listen to it on their way home in the car, uh, that will be on the website as well. So you can always grab Colin's details there. Um, and you, you probably got um, a bunch of gear on your websites and your blogs and stuff like that. And so we'll give those links as well, eh? Perfect. Yeah, there's loads of blogs on the website. Yeah, and we're bringing out a book uh, in another couple of months as well. So it's just to have it there for healthcare, healthcare businesses. Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, mate, thanks so much for, for joining us on the Business for Life webinar this afternoon. It's been brilliant having you along. And uh, as always, great to catch up. It's been a pleasure, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks, Colin. Thank you. And goodbye, all. Bye-bye.